Aun du ashmaya naf paddash ashmaq ta malkutakh nahwi suyanakh e kanna du ashmaya abbar a haulan lahma tsunkanan yawmana wash waqlan hawbain e kanna dab hanan shwaqan lhayawain la ta'lan lnisyona illa qassan min bisha mit tol di la khi malkuta ayla tishbahta lalam Amen. Amen. So, I I'm going to continue with some of Jesus's base teachings, and uh, today I I want to use uh, uh, Matthew. I'm going to start in chapter six and see how far we go. Um, I'll probably do about thirty minutes, and then hopefully you'll have some questions. Um, I did not receive any um online this this week so uh, uh, but i do i do have also some things that are you know kind of swirling in, in my mind around um religion and and uh spirituality that depending on how my talk goes i i will will touch on as well some of the stuff that we're getting in the news these days <clears throat> but with, what i wanted to start is in uh, in chapter six, uh, Jesus is uh, he talks about not to worry a lot. So back to to the Lord's prayer. Back to th there is a fundamental thing that that that's in the Lord's prayer that is also a, a trigger uh, word. But I think this chapter helps us understand where Jesus is coming from, which is the term "Our Father." Um, he 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 did not spend a lot of time talking about God. He he spent a lot of time talking about what God does, and a lot. And then he he used that to um, move us into if we are children of God, what can we do for each other to make this a better world? That that was fundamentally his ministry. His ministry was. To, to take care of, of us individually, kind of sets our mind at ease, bring us joy, stopping, uh, stop, stop worrying about things. That, that's his message to us. And stop, the, uh, the kind of like shed what society piles on top of you. Um, society puts a lot of stuff into us that we are not aware of and, until... Uh, it's sometimes it's too late and it becomes so intrinsic into in our personality that that kind of smothers that our spiritual nature and, and our loving and and uh, human uh, nature so um, and, and I've talked about this a lot hopefully you, you've heard this in, in other talks and if not please reach out and and I'll I'll be happy to either point you in the right direction and and so did uh, so does Dr. Uh, Erico often but but back back to to chapter six, and he he basically tells us in nature he he gives us a lot of examples from nature about flowers and, and maybe some of it is in chapter seven as well, um, flowers birds um, and in, before that in five the good and the wicked uh, people they all get good stuff from the father. Okay, that the, the God of Jesus, if if we if we use his term um, Abba or Awa, uh, gives you all you need. Gives uh, uh, all of nature, the, the the trees, the flowers, the birds, us, everything we need is available on Earth, and it's within our reach. Now we've created systems that. Tell, tells us otherwise, tells us, okay, you have to work really hard to obtain things. And once you obtain these things, you have to work really hard on keeping them and then passing them on to your uh, families. And that's that's even, in, in, I mean, if we're talking about th this is all, you know, throughout the Bible, some of that messaging is there. You know, it's there, there's a tribal mentality and there's tribe versus tribe and family within, within a tribe is... Uh, you know, is is the closest to you, and and the you know the one you need to affiliate with. So Jesus was trying to really hard to break all that, 
and bring us back into our essence where we are all one family, we're all of, of one nature, we're all here to enjoy and share earth under the umbrella of this loving parent who provides everything. Now, in in one of his probably most uh, you know most used verses, I, at least I've been to many churches that they they use this um, a lot, and it's it's a perfect great verse. Um, he he says at the end of of telling us not to worry and 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 to have faith that all these things will be there for us. He says in uh, verse thirty three of chapter six, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, this, this is key because he is talking about his, his core teaching of the kingdom. And the core teaching of the kingdom is that God, God is present. He's, he's our counselor. And he's, he's going to, he already makes everything good. We just need to tune in and find that righteousness that the righteousness that he's talking about is all these good things that are available for us see if if you if he's trying to shift the whole vision T today we we suffer from that we our vision and our mindset has shifted to fully um look look at the world through uh, social media the books that are written um the uh, the, the movies that are written there are, and all these follow very structured, successful formulas that pull us in very well. And then if you go try to find the spiritual messaging and you go into religion, you get mixed messages, not all religions. Now, fundamentally, I think a lot of them, uh, or I can say all religions had a spiritual message to start. And then over time, and we can see the evolution of that. If you look at the Jewish religion, one of the oldest uh, religion around, maybe you can say Buddhism is, is you know almost as old. They all started with a spiritual message. Abraham's message was uh, about this loving uh, God that that created this uh, this beautiful earth and beautiful universe and planets and and plants and animals and and he he made everything available for everybody. Um, but then over time, as it became more structured, tribal mindset almost you know took God and put him in a box to to take him everywhere because there were other gods and they didn't. so so God even evolved and evolved throughout the, the the Jewish religion. But where it is today and where it has been is now. Um, and, and I read this from one of the rabbis when when he was asked, you know, how many. Jewish uh, religions are there, like in you know, how many how many sects? He's the, the answer was there are as many Jewish religions are there are Jewish people. So he understood the rabbi understood that it, we we have to live from our individual space in in this uh, in this world, and we have to take the the religion and ad, ad, adopt it to us or adopt ourselves to it. Jesus was in complete alignment with that. He he saw that if we try to form a religion, then we are going to uh, lose our way and, and we'll, we'll start looking at conformity and ins and outs. And we see that today. Um, I was in, in, in the news right now. I was looking at uh, the evolution of, of Islam. The, the, the evolution of Islam, if you look at the very early uh, movement, it was about uh, don't don't kill girls because the the, the tribes the uh, that that uh, the the prophet Muhammad was in um, the, the, uh, girls were a, a burden and if if you had too many girls because of the raids of war and and their their traditions and so forth the tribal traditions um, they, they they were a burden so they had a very bad practice. Uh, of of burying uh, little girls or throwing them in in the desert, uh, burying them alive, he saw that as as injustice. The prophet did, and he spoke against it. Uh, so he wasn't very popular. He saw um, slavery, and he spoke very strongly against it. And some of his earliest followers were uh, slaves who either ran away or were freed. 
so, so you see where he was seeing uh, in, injustice and bad uh, practices in his society, and he was modifying that. Now, fast forward um, 14, 1500 years from, from those days, and we're looking at the religion evolving, and because it was adopted by states, and this is this is what happened with uh, to Christianity as well. Ad adoption of religion by state. Once you have the the state and the religion aligned, usually that means that the state, the political system, the established system, is being threatened too much by the religion that it took it over, and that's what happened to Christianity. And when when the Byzantine Empire took it, and then eventually a whole bunch of European uh, powers uh, declared themselves as as the uh, centers of Christianity and the protectors of Christianity, all that meant is that now you, you have a, a defined set of rules that, that you have to, to follow. Your individuality was lost. It's no longer important. And more dangerously, you can declare war and you can uh, define your laws that govern your society with the stamp of approval of religion. So I was talking about like um, here in our own country. I'm not. I'm not going to go outside immediately. But in our own country, in the United States, we we are using religion and religious groups to pass laws that we think come from the Bible about, like you know, that the laws of abortion. Uh, so you have an individual decision that now is becoming a an institutional uh, decision. Um, we have, um, we're hearing in Iran today, they, uh, today or yesterday, they passed more strict laws about women covering their heads uh, or, or uh, obeying the Islamic code of, of, uh, of clothing. Again, you're taking something that was, uh, I'm not sure it's what was even uh, mentioned in the Quran. I think it, it came from a hadith or, or from uh, early uh, talks by the Prophet about uh, being, being modest. So if you go, and again, this is a Near Eastern issue because Jewish people, Christian people, and uh, Muslim people in the Near East have a very modest way of dressing for women. They, they that's cultural. Um, you go today to church in in uh, in the Near East, in the Middle East, in uh, North Africa, and a lot of women are, you know, they 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 wear long. Uh, dresses. They sometimes they they put a scarf on their head. Uh, you look uh, in, into uh, you know, whether it's New York or or uh, uh, Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. You look at the Jewish people. A lot of them when they go to the synagogue, they're they're covered. They're wearing mo modest clothing. So so that's now I know that also some some more modern uh, groups have freed up that and they basically refuse to uh, just take an old cultural habit and make it apply for you know the, the religion today or the people of the religion see so, so see how now if you start thinking the religion versus the people who are practice uh, practicing the religion some groups reach the, the point where hey I, I can dress any way I want my relationship with with God is an individual issue my my decisions about my body about my appearance are up to me and nobody can dictate what I should do man or woman so 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 Jesus you know uh, maybe unfortunately he did not go to that level of detail but he addressed it at a bigger level like when when he asked us not to call other people by a bad name because that starts conflict and that could lead to murder. When he was kind of dismantling the idea of thou shall not kill, he was taking the commandment, but he was taking it down to the root cause of, you know, so, so think if you apply that, you know, calling somebody effeminate or according to Jesus or going to church and looking at somebody and saying, you know, she's showing too much, he's showing too much, or he's, this is inappropriate or anything like that. And if you voice that, you're either going to push them out of the church or you're going, if, they, if they're strong, you might create a conflict that ca can cause a lot of trouble. So, so, so it's very important that when, when we're dealing with the things that Jesus is talking about with faith and the kingdom of God, that we keep in mind that he is... He, he's trying to give us keys for joy, keys for uh, getting along and living together in, in a good, positive society. 
um, I, I was trying to think of, of a, you know, an alternative to the societies we, we, we exist in now or evolved into existing. And, and it, it's his, his bet, Jesus's bet was, and, and it took place and it was successful the first 300 years, is that the more we empower good people to be good, the more society is going to change into this accepting, loving society. And that's when the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is going to manifest itself. So, and that's how early Christianity spread. And that's how early Christianity was threatening the, the political systems. I think we can see that probably across all religions. The Jewish religion, and unfortunately, if you read it sequentially the way it is in the Bible, you kind of miss some of it because you don't see the, the constant struggle. It's a, it's a, I, I had an image here. I don't, I don't have it up right now. But if, if you look at the, the history of uh, Judaism and the kingdoms that have formed over time, there were always in, in every period, there were prophets who were guiding spiritually uh, and sometimes politically, so the, 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 the movement of those kingdoms and the conflicts they were going through and the hard times and the good times. So, so there, it's not quite as, as we read it here. It's like, you know, the, the, the first five books and then, the, you know, kings and or Samuel kings, blah, blah. It, it's actually more kind of stacked. And that stacking is so important because as you're studying the prophets, you need to understand their predictions and all that stuff that's related to the times they were in. So now if you go to Jesus's time, his time was very complex. It has its own, its own complexity. Um, Judea and, um, and Galilee and, and the whole area is under Roman rule. There were conflicts between these areas that uh, preceded the, the, the Roman occupation. Those, those issues were not resolved. So there was still a lot of tension between the Galileans and the Judeans and the Samaritans and the people of the 10 cities uh, up north and, and the, the people in Damascus up north. And though the, there were like remnants of, of Jewish and Assyrian and Chaldean and, and Canaanites and so forth. So it was very, very complex community to, to, to navigate. And here is this man trying to figure out, it's like, when are we going to go past all these definitions and, and evolve or devolve back to our natural, spiritual, loving nature and get along because there is plenty he could see that there is plenty for us to share there is plenty for us to annihilate poverty annihilate this need to own land annihilate this need to own a lot more all these things he, he could see it the abundance was there but it was being controlled and being managed and being defined by the uh, the the political systems and even the religious systems of his time so he's saying here Seek first. Stop worrying. Stop worrying because worry does not. He, he may give a lot of examples. You can't change the, the the length or the color of one of your hairs, no matter how long you worry about it. So, uh, or so so you you can't grow a new one, and even if you wanted to. Now nowadays, I know with, with all the the drugs we have and and the. Uh, uh, ability to plant hair and so forth, we can maybe, you know, modify some of that, which, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give science a thumbs up on, on moving in that direction. But it, it's still, we, we worry and we judge and, 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 and we, we have these, these things that we hold on to as the truth. So he's, he's trying to break us out of that. And he's trying to tell us, okay, first, become a good a good person like this father who provides you with everything and all these things all the things that you worry about will be given unto you so he's, he's playing with with the faith here just trust me and jump in both feet and things will move in the right direction I might need more time yeah pretty good <clears throat> therefore don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will look after itself, sufficient for each day its own trouble. V very wise. Again, be, be in the moment, be in the now. Uh, do 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 the good work right now. That you know, and stop worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. And then he goes into uh, judgment. Um, again, you know, back back to to my example with with the religion evolving. It, 
or or devolving into this this uh, organized state. Uh, all of them ha have had that, that problem. All the religions have that problem. Then judgment creeps in. Okay, we start immediately deciding. Okay, are you a good Christian or a bad Christian? A good Muslim or a bad Muslim? A good person or a bad person? If you're not of that religion, so you can see how he, he's he's attacking that from the get go. He's saying, okay, judgment is very dangerous. He he tells in, in his example, he's saying, okay, first of all, nobody is perfect. Okay, so so before you try to judge anybody, he uses a, that the idea that you have a beam in your eye and you're trying to pick. Um, a, a little thing out of your brother's eye. Okay, so you need, first of all, to go take care of, of the beam in your eye to be able to see clearly, to be able to help somebody. So he's putting the burden back on the on the individual to, you know, he's not just saying don't, don't judge. He's telling you how to do it. The way you do it is you purify yourself by constantly evaluating, am I doing the right things? Am I being a good child of God? Am I living by the rules of the kingdom? And these things eventually will allow you to go help somebody the tendency that we have typically is evaluating ourselves is so hard looking in the mirror and and finding those beams sticking in our eyes uh, are, are are really really hard to do it's so much easier to look at somebody's problem and say oh they drink too much they eat too much they don't work out they, they they've wasted their life in that company they you know that we we can say all these things but to go stand in front of a mirror and say hmm, how am i doing about my health uh when was the last time i worked out uh how has my career developed um and uh, you know it, it, those those are very hard questions for us and sometimes you know we can say oh check we we did very well so as soon as you start checking that i'm doing well here and i'm doing well there i'm doing maybe because you you are shifting your way and believe me one of one of the things that you learn is now you become a, more of a mentor helping people navigate these issues than somebody who's pointing the finger and saying okay you're you're too skinny you're too fat you're too uh, success uh, you're not successful enough and that that's so he's he's attacking another aspect of our humanity judgment is very 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 easy and think about how many times that nowadays i was i was talking about how the systems you know social media the news the the, the movies and the tv shows the, uh, the the religion itself they all have a formula that works okay some of them use guilt to bring you back in. Some of them use some kind of addictive behavior around likes and dislikes. Likes and dislikes are judgments, right? Anytime you see somebody and you put a, a, a like, usually likes are easier, but it's the dislikes that tend to hurt. And sometimes people um, get even offended because they put something up and nobody liked it or disliked it. So so th these, these, these are now, today in our world, they're no longer just a, um, you know, something that you can, in Jesus's time, is something you had to work at, to run into somebody, to go to their house, to actually make a judgment call on them, or go into, into your uh, family gathering and, and saying something to somebody. Nowadays, I can sit here and pass a hundred judgments in like a minute while, while I'm on Instagram or on TikTok or something. So it's very important that we, we pay close attention to our behavior, especially when it comes to judgment, because it has a lot of ripple effects, both on you and on them. Because they, they, Jesus says, because with the same judgment that you judge, you will be judged too. And with the same measure, which you uh, measure, it will be measured to you too. So, 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 you know, again, he's warning us that if we play that game, if we think we're immune because we are sitting, you know, behind a screen or or uh, at a higher place, uh, that's that's not gonna pass. Somebody else is gonna come and make you feel the same way you make other people feel. And he he was, I mean, it's, uh, this this was two thousand years ago, way ahead of his time. <clears throat> and then he talks about the splinter and 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 uh, your eye, the splinter in your brother's eye versus the beam in your eye. Um, and then he talks about something else that, that is kind of, I, I know I might have touched on it before. Do not give holy things to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine, for they might tread them with their feet and then turn and rend you. 
So th this is th this is a jewel. That's why it's one of those very very precious sayings of of Jesus. Now now it, they're complex because you can think of them as he's making a judgment. And what what he's saying here, and he he's, he, he continues this this path. Now, I'm I'm already in chapter seven. Um, there, there are people who bought so much into the system that you cannot change them just by speaking to them. And you cannot share the, even these teachings, these very basic, powerful teachings with people who are not ready for them. So, and, and I know a lot of good people who try really hard to save people from their, their wrong ways. They feel like, you know, they remember what I talked about. The more you look and, and, and um, evaluate yourself and the more you start following the teachings of Jesus, the more you'll, you'll become more of a mentor, more, more, of a, uh, more of a guide, more of an example. He wanted examples. He, he, he talks a lot about yeah, they, they, the, 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 the tree, the good tree is known by its fruits. Uh, you will be known by your works. He, he constantly mentions how you, you get noticed not because of what you say. It's because of how you, how you behave and who you are. So he, here he is telling us that don't spin your wheels trying to, to con convert people, change their way of thinking because they they not only will will ignore and and you're wasting your stuff on them but they they might turn uh, around and actually you know uh, punish you or 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 be hard on you now remember we we're supposed to be a peaceful group of christians of followers of jesus um so we are not supposed to carry weapons we're not supposed to to create a lot of conflict so he, this warning is very very sound because we we're supposed to be the meek Without the ones who 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 bend, not the ones who stand and fight. And here he's not saying, you know, that but he's saying things could go bad if you spin your wheels in the wrong places. Ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. So, so th this key is is important. Again, he's not preaching. The go, go once once you're, uh, you know, once you you uh, decide to follow the teachings of the kingdom, go sit on a on a high mountain and and meditate all day. He he wants action. He wants you to continue to grow. He wants you to continue. And and he's he's saying that as you seek more, more wisdom, more love, more compassion. It will be given to you. You you will you will get, but you have to take the action. You have to be out there doing this work, doing the good work. Okay, being that being the awesome employee, not not to rise above the other employees who work with you, just because you want to be the awesome employee. He he wants you to be that the good doctor. He wants you to be the good claim processor, the good driver, the good teacher, the good son, daughter. You name it. Be that good and and constantly work at that goodness, okay? Because that's that that's how people notice that. It's like wow, you know, they 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 constantly. I, I just watched uh, the the show. Hopefully, some of you got to catch it uh, called the Jury Duty, where they recruited. I, I don't want to spoil the, the plot, but if think about what I'm teaching here, or maybe go back, pause here, you know, or, or right when when I did, said this, go watch that show and come back. It, it's when, when people are doing the right things all the time, no matter what the opportunity is with the most awkward situations, then you can, um, you, 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 you grow and people around you notice that and they become better. Then he thought, so th this is what I, I started by saying why he called God the father he, this is this is the simplistic way he was thinking of uh, of describing God. And not a lot of dogma. Not uh, you know I have I have books this thick about God and and God's evolution. And this is the God of Jesus. That, that, I mean, this is I, I was telling somebody just the other day how, how God did not uh, Jesus did not spend a lot of time talking about God. For who, for whoever asks receives and then knocking the door is open. 
Uh, okay, here we go. Or this is the verse nine, chapter seven. Or who is the man among you who, when his son asks him for bread, will hand him a stone? Or if he should ask him for fish, he will hand him a snake. Okay, first he's using a very um, cultural example because people in his time lived in you know simple um, shacks. Uh, so a lot of them lived in tents still, and they think you know they didn't have a lot of things. And sometimes they would, you know, you would have a little stone that looking like that, the, the hard bread that they, they baked at the time. Uh, so he's saying, you know, and, and he's reaching, you know, this is the father reaching. So, so the mistake could be made, but a good parent would double check and make sure that their children get what they're asking for. That's the God of Jesus. He doubles, he double checks and gives you what you need. He doesn't trick you into something else. Or by mistake, give you something else. That's that's why he used the term father. He said, he, he's thinking, what would a good parent do? Because uh, his God, his his Allah, is a, a, a good Allah, not not a bad one, not a tricky one. Whatever you wish men to do for you, do likewise for them. For this is the law and the prophets. Okay, again, he's he's emphasizing. He's he's using that the, uh, the the Hebrew teachings that the the Torah and the laws and the prophets because there's a constant message of always behave well always do the right thing and do unto others as you want them to do unto you okay so this is this is a, a good guide a good basic guide that just like you want God to give you all these things that you need, Treat others the same way you want to be treated. This is why I like the, these these chapters. I can spend more, you know, my whole time in, in these three chapters and, and not go anywhere else in, in the Bible. <clears throat> what are we doing? Okay. Uh, so we are at uh, 33 minutes. Let me see if I want to. The, the next the next couple of verses he just talks about uh, and I'm not going to continue uh, much much after that he talks about how the the uh, the door into these uh, that the pathway into these teachings is the narrow it's the harder path and he warns against right right after that in verse 15 he he warns against false prophets so so the, so so he's constantly uh, he's saying that that the the the, the, the way to become like God, to become a good person, is the is not the easy way. It's usually it's the harder way. It gets easier. My my experience and and the, the, according to his teachings, the more you do, the more you practice, the more it becomes. You know, you you're bring you're bringing something that's already built into you. So that's that's his guarantee. Is that we are? That's why he says we need to turn back. You know, return to to uh, our uh, like be born again or become uh, like children. He uses that in different areas of the Bible because he knows that this is our intrinsic nature. I was speaking with a friend of mine about how you know kids go to school sometimes. You know, we think that we are all the influence on the kids, but if there are kids who are being raised by parents who have specific way of believing. You know, just those those five, six hours at school, your kid is going to pick that up. You might have picked it up then, then too. Then, you know, some kind of judgment, some kind of a, um, a bias against some ethnicity, you know, because people, you once you're out of uh, th that stage and, and, uh, and you start learning, you learn some maybe a lot of good things in the house, but then you're exposed to other things outside of the house. And you're exposed to other things as you start reading your own books and listening to your own shows and watching your own shows. And, and the formulas of those things changes you. And if you buy into it, it's so subtle. But it's, it's again, I, as I said, if you look at all of them, they have formulas. And those formulas are very powerful and they work through all of your defenses, no matter how, how wise and how well educated you are and how guarded you are, it sneaks in. And so there are some teachings that you think, oh, this is straight out of Jesus's mouth or this is straight out of the Bible or, and it doesn't exist anywhere. 
just like some of the laws that are being passed about, you know, um, women or about you know some minister can say this is this is what the bible says and it, it, maybe it does because it could be from somebody else like paul might have said it or some uh some prophet said it at the specific uh situations that i said why i said studying things uh, you know like in in their taking them into their time and their historical context is very important now, there is, there is a practice in the Bible all over where they take something that was said before and they apply it to now, ignoring that that it was done in that specific time. And in a way, it sometimes it's accepted if it's a, you know, a wisdom teaching that, that does apply, but sometimes it's also misused and, and they use it to trick you. That's why Jesus was saying, be careful of false prophets. They, 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 there are people who will master these things and twist them around and make you feel really bad about yourself and about other people. So I'll stop now and we'll go to Q&A.